ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا يهد الله فلا مضل له فمن يضل فهادي الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون الا وانتم مسلمون brothers and sisters we praise allah the almighty we believe in him, we trust in him, we bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allah's slave and the last of the prophets. We ask Allah to bless his messenger Muhammad Alayhi Salat Wasalam and his companions and his family, all of them. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, I ask Allah the Almighty to guide my tongue what's in my heart. Today's khutbah is based upon a man. We don't know his name. Qala rajulun, a man said to the Prophet alayhi salat wa salam, Ya kharubariya, O the best of creation. And that man gave to the Prophet the highest compliment that you can ever consider. What the Arabs call ismu tafdil, it is a superlative. Not just a good man, but the best of creation. My khutbah is a commentary on what the Prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him, and what we're to learn from this. Ya khairul bariya, O the best of creation. And the Prophet alayhi salat wa salam said two words. He said, Dhaka Ibrahim. That's Ibrahim. You want to know the best of creation? Dhaka Ibrahim. And so I want to mention that, some commentary, why the Prophet said that, in my opinion. And then I want to end with saying that I have some compelling evidence that what that man said was true. Ya khairu bariya. This is what I want to do, inshallah. First of all, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, one prayer in my masjid is better than 1,000 prayers in any other masjid. masjid al haram Except Masjid Haram, the house that Ibrahim built. One prayer in Masjid Haram is better than 100,000 prayers in any other masjid. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, I am the answer to the supplication da'wah to Abi Ibrahim. I am the answer of the supplication of my father, Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam. So you're talking about his father. Allah says in Quran, Kullu nafsan da'ikatul maut. Every soul shall taste of death. We all die. There are some 7 billion, 700 million people on the earth today. According to the scientists, there have been about 100 billion people from the beginning of time. 100 billion people. And if you are Muslim, you bear witness that all of these 100 billion people will be resurrected. They will live again. This is why Allah used the word Kullu nafsan ikatul maut They shall taste of death because Allah will resurrect us And if you understand the hadith you know that all of us will be resurrected naked And the first one to be dressed on Yawm Al-Qiyamah Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam We're making an argument why the Prophet said Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam There is a verse in the Quran that the same, almost the same verse appears in the Bible. God did take Abraham as a Khalil. 
Taqdullah Ibrahim Khalil and Allah took Ibrahim as a Khalil. In the Quran they say, Kunuhudana Nusara Tahdadu Kul Bal Millata Ibrahim Hanifa wa Makana Milan Mushrikeen. They say be Christian or Jew if you're gonna be guided aright. Allah told the Prophet, no, 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 say, say this, no. Rather, the religion of Abraham, he was not of the polytheists. And you will go on a long list of things about the Prophet Ibrahim Whenever I travel, wherever I go, whatever country I go to, the first thing I ask the organizers, please, when they take me to my hotel, show me the direction of the Qibla. Show me the direction of the house that Abraham built so that I can make my prayer and pray in that direction. And I can give you a long list of things about Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam. Yes, Allah did take Abraham as a friend. But why did the prophet say that? I agree with whatever the prophet said. But I'm saying to you here today that the Prophet was humble and always showed deference. I'll give you a couple of examples. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said that every human being that's born is touched by shaitan at birth, except two human beings. Who are they? Isa alayhi salat wa salam and his mother Maryam. The Prophet said, someone asked him, Men akramun nas, who is the most honorable person? He could have said, me. He didn't say me, he said Yusuf, the son of a prophet, the grandson of a prophet, the great grandson of a prophet. So he always given some preference to prophets. For instance, he said, Ahabu salat ilallah salatu Dawood. Wahabu siyam ilallah siyamu Dawood. The best, the most beloved prayer to to Allah is the prayer of David. He could have said me. The best fast to Allah is the fast of Dawood. So the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, always give him preference. I look to the Quran to find out about Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam, why he's so blessed. And I found this ayat. Idibtala Ibrahim wa rabbuhu bi kalimatin fatamahunna. And when we gave Abraham test, he passed every test. And I'm saying that now for us. For sure, we are tested every day. Blessed be in him whose hand is the dominion of the heavens and the earth. He created life and death to test you to see who's best in conduct. So that's what it is. We're being tested. Ibrahim was tested. And so we will be tested. In what way? Many ways. I want to remind you, be careful about tests. Because tests are very difficult and hard. Some people lose their faith because they're tested. I remember a few years ago, during the month of Ramadan, I was at Reagan Airport. And I was sitting down reading my Quran. And the man came to me and said, uh, is that the Quran you're reading? I said, yes. He said, I used to read the Quran. He said, is this the month of Ramadan? I said, yes. He said, are you fasting? I said, yes. He said, you're Muslim? I said, yes. He said, I used to fast. I used to read the Quran. I used to be a Muslim. So I closed my book. I closed my Quran and I began to talk to him. I said, what happened? He said, I became angry at Allah. So I began to talk to him, try to cater unto him. And while I was talking to him, the announcement came that my flight was boarding. And I stood up and said, sir, I have to go on the plane now. My plane is about to board. 
And he told me, he said, I work here. And that plane won't move until I tell it to move. Sit down. I said, yes, sir. And I sat down, and I sat down because I know that the man needed something. Maybe that day he came back to Islam. Maybe there's a lot of people you know, a lot of Muslims you know, who left the fold of Islam because they were tested. You don't think it's possible? Consider what the Prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him. He said, there's going to come a time of test. A person will begin the morning believing, and by the end of the night, they disbelieve. A person will believe at night, and by the the morning time, they disbelieve. Why? Test. So I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, know for a fact that you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested with your children. You're going to be tested with your property. I know Muslims who have come to me, Imam, I just got evicted from my apartment. I just lost my house. I lost my job. I, my, my, my mother died. My husband died. My, my wife died. My daughter died. My son died. There's one brother told me, you see, ma'am, I take 27 different medications a day. There's a brother in my community years ago, he told me, ma'am, I had so many operations, and every time I have an operation, the doctor takes something. I don't have much left, but I said, oh, my Allah, as long as I can praise you, you're going to be tested by your health. So many ways you're going to be tested. And I'm saying to you, hold on. Yes, ya khairu bariya, O best of mankind. The Prophet said, best, best of creation. Thaka Ibrahim, walhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah. Now, brothers and sisters, let me take a moment to go to the other side. I know what it's like when people put on you something that you don't deserve. I saw recently a post, Imam Siraj Wahaj, a scholar in Islam. I don't say this out of humility. I'm not a scholar of Islam. I know what a scholarship is. I'm a brother who studies, but I ain't no scholar. I can point to you scholars. So it's embarrassing when people put on you something that you don't deserve. But when that man said, Khairu Beriya, the best of creation, I would like to give you a compelling reason that that man was right. A couple of things. When you take shahada, many of you were born Muslims. People like me and Imam Jahari, we accepted Islam. As the Prophet والسلام, said, Ida amana rajlu bi Isa, thumma amana bi falahu ajulani. Whoever believes in Jesus and then believes in me will have a double reward. There are a lot of Muslims sitting um, in our ranks who used to be atheists, used to be Christians, used to be Jews, different religions, and Allah guided them to Islam. Never forget what the Prophet said that Allah said, Ya ibadi kulukun dolun illa min hadaytu fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my slaves, every one of you are misguided unless I guide you. Therefore ask me and I will guide you. Allah guided us to Islam, alhamdulillah. But, when you become Muslim, what you say? Shadu an la ilaha illallah, shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. In the very shahada, you have to mention the Prophet Sallallahu Some one billion, eight hundred million Muslims, you come to the masjid, you pray, whatever country you go to, you go to Turkey, you go to Syria, you go to Jordan, you go to Mecca, you go to Indonesia, you go to Malaysia, you go to Pakistan, you go to Sudan, you go to Somalia. Wherever you go, you see people praying basically the same way 
Because the Prophet said, Salli, pray as you see me pray. We love Ibrahim والسلام, but we learn how to pray with the Prophet. Not only that, Allah says in Quran, Man you tell Rasul Allah. Whoever obeys the messenger has in fact obeyed Allah. That's deep. I give you another one. You want to see how what Allah thinks about the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him? Not only does he say, Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul, obey Allah, no, obey the messenger. All throughout the Quran, Allah mentions the messenger, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. But one interesting verse. The Prophet, Allah told the Prophet, Qul, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni, yuhbikum Allah, wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wa Allah ghafur rahim. Say, if you love Allah, Allah is telling the Prophet, if you love Allah, follow me, follow Muhammad Allah will love you. Based on following the Prophet I can give you a million examples why the Prophet I ain't disagreeing with the Prophet, but the best of creation. I leave you with one more. And this is compelling. You know, on Yom Al Qiyamah, when people are dealing with the judgment, the judgment is about to happen, and mankind, who do they go to? They don't go to political leaders, they don't go to presidents and prime ministers and kings and queens, they don't go to business people. They don't go to scientists. Who they go to for help? They go to the prophets. Six prophets. One, the first one they're going to go to, not because he's one of the greatest of the prophets, but let's see what they say. Yeah, Adam, and Abu Bashar, you are the father of mankind. Allah created you with his own hand. And he, and he breathed the soul into you. And put you in the Jannah. For ordered the angels to bow down and the angels bow down. And then Adam will say, I'm not fit for that. And then they will go to the five greatest prophets, beginning with Noah, alayhi salat wa salam. And Noah will say, I'm not fit for it. Ibrahim, alayhi salat wa salam, they will go to him, he said, I'm not fit for it. Go to Moses, I'm not fit for it. Go to Jesus. Alayhi salat wa salam said, I ain't fit for it. Itha billah Muhammad. And the Prophet said, Ana, Ana laha, I'm, 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 that's me. That's me. And the people will go to intercession to Rasulullah and he will intercede. My last one. Yom al Qiyamah, Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. Ascend into Jannah. And knock at the gate of Jannah. And the angel will say, Men enter, who are you? Qala Muhammad. I will say Muhammad. And the angel will say, Because of you, I was commandment, commanded, let no one in Jannah before you. Let no one in Jannah before you. It must be something special. I don't say this this afternoon to make us, you know, undo praise on the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. That's not my point. My point is to make us to love him, to respect him. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta kunna habba ilayhi min walidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'in. You're not even a believer. 
you're not a true believer. You don't have true faith until I, Muhammad, is loved more to you than your own parents, your children, and all of mankind. I want to remind us today how much we love him, but if we love him, follow him. Be like him. Take him as an example. We ask Allah the Almighty to have mercy upon us. We ask Allah the Almighty, all the Muslims who suffer around the world, we ask Allah, Ya Allah, for your help. Ask Allah for those Muslims in Syria that suffer, and the Muslims in Yemen, and the Muslims in Palestine, the Muslims in Kashmir, the Muslims all over the world, the Muslims, uh, Rohingya Muslims from Burma, the Muslims in China, all of them that suffer. We ask Allah the Almighty to help them. Rabbana taqabal minna innaka anta sameeun alim. Rabbana la tuakhidna nasina atu'na. Rabbana wala tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltatu alladhina min qablina. Rabbana wala tuhammilna ma la tuakhidna alayna abi. Wa'afur anna, wa'afir lana, warhamna anta maulana fansuna ala al-kawmi al-kafirin. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil alameen. يقوم الصلاة